I'm Blake Hamilton, and welcome to episode two of The Audience. I'm your host. Um, I thought I would do um, this episode while I'm driving around, since uh, there's been some developments on the uh, Will Smith, Chris Rock story. Um, in episode one, as you'll remember if you watched it, and for those who haven't, I'll get you up to speed. Um, about a couple of days after the Academy Awards, America and Hollywood, especially, specifically, had sort of a rock bottom moment as Will Smith, as you already know, um, assaulted uh, Chris Rock. Struck him across the face because Chris Rock had made a joke about uh, Will Smith's wife. And even though Will Smith at first laughed about the joke, he looked around and realized at least his wife was like, oh, no, you shouldn't have gone there. And so, you know, had a bit of a cancel culture um, moment where in his mind he's like, oh, I better hate on this. And then tr proceeded to uh, uh, cancel Chris Rock, if he could, with a slap across the face. Um, so, you know, everyone's talking about it. And, you know, normally gossipy stuff like this, you know, Tom Cruise hopping up and down on a couch. <laughs> Do you remember that? Um, you know, I kind of look at stuff like that and think, okay, really? Don't we have bigger and better things to talk about. But no, I think this one is worth the um, conversation um, because, you know, obviously it just represents so much of what's wrong with our, our country right now, you know, going to the cancel culture stuff. And also the, um, you know, the fact that where is Hollywood at? Like this really is sort of like the, the, the camel that broke, sorry, the straw that broke the <laughs> camel's back as it were. So, I mean, obviously it's symbolic of something and we need to address it uh, because, you know, there's so much going on there that, you know, this is like a little bit of a window into the soul of a, a dying Hollywood culture, if not already dead. And so for part two, I was going to cover some ground that I didn't the first time around, but, um, you know, just to sort of start off sort of like with what I think the remedy is, because I think that's a good way to, um, you know, start with the end and, you know, work my way to the beginning. Um, the remedy for this is simple. Um, if Will Smith, uh, despite his problems, he said in an interview that he's a work in progress. If he really wants to fix this, um, give back the Oscar. Now that poses an interesting question for the Academy of Arts and Science or whatever they're called, um, because they're faced with this decision. There's already been a heated debate that, you know, that apparently they tried to kick him out and Will Smith refused, but because the enabler side of Hollywood sort of jumped in kind of like the, the, uh, abused girlfriend who's addicted to the abuse of abuse, you know, mentality sort of kicked in. They just let him stay when they really should have kicked him out. And I'm surprised that Chris Rock, when having an opportunity to have him arrested, didn't. I mean, I think he actually should have. You know, considering it wasn't just his safety at stake. Like, what if Will Smith had gotten up and struck somebody else? But um, in any case, the way it played out, uh, now the Academy is like, what do we do? And I think the advice is very simple. So before I give it, I was going to present my sort of little uh, campaign as far as what I plan to do. Um, as the audience, um, as I uh, reflected on in my first show, the audience, in my opinion, is sort of this mystical thing. We all share in it we all at times sit in the audience. So our heart is sort of, uh, you know, not to get too romantic about it, but you know, our heart is connected for when we sit down in front of a movie. So on behalf of the audience, I'm speaking, because I think a lot of us watch that and you know, hey, I'm, I'm down for some good theater. If anything, you know, it, it's like, this is good. Anytime anything happens to get us talking about movies again, that sort of connects us. So we're not just at home, you know, laming out on Netflix and that sort of thing. You know, that, hey, there we are. If this is where the audience is now, instead of where it should be, watching a movie screen that we're just sort of sitting together, watching this play out, you know, theater is theater. There's a movie playing out here and we've been sort of stuck in a movie just right before Trump was elected. And even though that sounds like a cool thing, it's really not. You know, that's sort of the evolutionary uh, purpose that movies provide is it takes this thing called the mind, which um, in Indian culture, they have a different word for mind. I think they use the word Maya, which means disease. So if you're under, ever wondering, well, what practical purpose, survival purposes movies play? Well, it's better that that part of the mind, that malignancy, end up where it should belong, in the arts, rather than spilling out to each and everything. Because now we're all characters in this movie. And it's a movie that's not stopping. It's an ongoing soap opera that threatens to consume us because we're threatening to consume us with our own appetites and behaviors and that sort of thing. So that said, 
um, as a member of the audience, as a spokesperson for the audience, as an advocate for the audience, all right? Um, you know, I, I looked up the Academy's information and, you know, as delusional as it sounds, I mean, you know, if you're going to campaign about something, I mean, what, what happened? Like the last time I think people came together, and I don't think this was the audience, but fans came together and outraged over something as silly as like Sonic the Hedgehog, whether or not he was accurately depicted or something like that. I mean, wow, those people actually, <laughs> you know, the movie makers on, on that actually got so um, agitated or worried that they went back and spent millions of dollars to redo the graphics for that, proving that, you know, people can have a say. It's just my problem with that is, well, why not have a say about something that matters? So this is me throwing my, my hat into the ring, you know, putting some skin in the game. And so I, I'm going to contact, um, I don't keep you up to date on this. I'm going to contact the Academy of Arts and Science, whatever they're called. Um, and I encourage you to do the same. Um, maybe I'll put the link at the bottom of this video. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. And just email them and call them and nag them until they do the right thing. So now onto my plan. I think this is sort of a bizarre dilemma because as I touched in the um, first video, and I'm certainly going to do that here as well, um, Will Smith is a narcissist and uh, he's a narcissist of the malignant kind, meaning, you know, we may be dealing with some type of sociopath here. Yeah, there's a bit of armchair um, psychology, but it's also really not. I mean, the mask of sanity slipped. I recommend if you get a chance, uh, pick up a book called The Sociopath Next Door. It's sort of like a easy layman's way to sort of read up on, on these types of people. And, you know, Will Smith has some issues like a lot of people. If you also want to read another fun book about the subject in a sense, then read um, Peter Biskin's book, um, Easy Riders Raging Bulls. And there's a great line in it where somebody he's interviewing is like, you know, with Hollywood, you just got to be candid about yourself. I'm paraphrasing. But he says something like... Um, uh, uh, Hollywood's full of addicts and sociopaths. And, you know, it's a very crude thing to say. I, I, don't, I think that word's probably terribly misused, but for lack of a better purpose, for entertainment reasons, I'm just going to stick with that because it's sort of, you know, if he wants to play the character of the, the, of the victim after slapping somebody kind of thing, so if he wants to be sort of the O.J. Simpson or Ted Bundy of the moment, okay, well then, yeah, you just cast yourself as the villain here. And like I said in my first video, why are you listening to me? Why are you listening to another asshole here? Well, because... You know, the Hollywood system is such a jaded, cynical, closed-off community. It's, it's, it's almost like the Club 54 within the Club 54 of elites right now. So if there's no room for middle-class actors like me and, you know, peop, you know, the audience certainly should have a voice beyond just the pocketbook, well, then I don't mind playing the villain, too. And that's the point, is that Will Smith isn't aware. There's no awareness there. He, he thinks at the moment that he's doing the right thing, even though I think deep down inside he knew he screwed up. And so, you know what, it should be fun for one of us, or all of us, as it were, to come together and say, okay, well, here's what we think needs to happen. You know, express our force, as it were, as, you know, a member of the audience. Because, you know, not to be rude, but why are we doing this if it's not for us, you know? And so, to my bit of advice here, um, if you already skipped ahead to hear the good stuff, um, it's simple. I think in dealing with a manipulative person like Will Smith, who clearly engages in gaslighting, um, what, what the Academy needs to do is, I don't think they should take the Oscar away from him. Instead, what you guys need to do is really simple here, is you need to sort of issue like a, 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 a sort of a, 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 a declaration saying that, yes, we condemn Will Smith, but we think that what the right thing to do is, they should do like sort of a recommendation, is we think it would be the right thing for Will Smith to surrender his Oscar, even though we're not going to enforce this, and let him do the right thing. And the reason I think they should do that is because if they take this Oscar away from him, well, then he's going to play the victim. Oh, no, they stole an Oscar away from the guy, you know, one of the few black actors that even won it. You know what I mean? And he'll totally play up that card. So don't give him that. But on the other hand, if they don't do anything and just say, you know, we're going to make him do community service. Uh, he has to donate $5,000. No, no, no. To this organization or that. That doesn't really solve anything because he'll, he'll play that part, too. So once you... Make it, you know, turn up the heat on him and say, here's what he needs to do. Uh, he needs to surrender that Oscar. And I do think, given his outrageous behavior, he should be banned. As simple as that. I mean, they banned some guy from the Godfather movies for, like, movie piracy? Because he was handing around screeners? I'm like, really? And then, yeah, there's more severe examples. People like Roman Polanski and Harvey Weinstein. So he certainly fits in the middle of that. But no, they need to ban his ass. He is not welcome back. Even if he just gets up and tries to make a joke, say, hey, Chris, hey, <laughs> you remember that slap? <laughs> Start slapping himself. 
No, 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 no. You know, don't even get... Because that just makes the abuse worse. Because here's the thing, though. Any stand-up comedian is going to be scared to do an act for fear that they're going to get slapped. And did you notice that the second Will Smith did this, just look at the media, like, O.J. Simpson's chiming in, of all people. Like, wait, great. You know, a man who murdered his wife is saying that he thinks what Will Smith was... You know, like what he did was right because he was just defending his wife. I mean, that's the sort of, that's the gates of hell that have been opened in this, as it were. So, um, yeah, he can't be allowed back. I think that at least needs to be said and done. But as far as the Oscar, if he wants to hold on to it, let him. Because that object has no longer any meaning. I mean, the minute he did that, he stained himself. And you know what's funny about the Academy Awards? Look at the history of the Academy Awards, okay? In the Academy Awards... Um, sometimes the Oscars actually the worst thing that could happen to an actor. Like, look what happened to Louis Gossett Jr. Great guy, but he developed such terrible anxiety. Like, they make fun of that in a movie with, um, uh, uh, Kevin Costner. Great underrated actor. I only say that because, man, that guy's one of the last great movie stars, and why don't we still talk about him? He, there's, a, there's an episode in, I'm sorry, there's a moment, there's a scene in a movie called Tin Cup where he plays a golf pro who suddenly he's not any good at the sport he gets called the shanks and yeah the academy award will do that to an actor like Halle Berry is another great example of it where the minute she won the academy award she became so self-conscious now that she's an academy award winner you could tell it was interfering now with her ability to act even you know industry types like Steven Spielberg were never the same after they you know deservedly won their academy awards it seemed to affect them because now they have to be the academy award winning director you know so sometimes you know unlike say Milos Foreman who kind of laughed at the academy awards he's the guy who directed one uh, one who flew over the cuckoo's nest and just said you know this is a great honor it's awesome but you know at the end of the day you can't take this too seriously just have fun with it also the director of Amadeus another great movie um you know this is going to be for Will Smith, um, uh, the albatross around his neck. So if he, so the reason why I'm suggesting all this is I, I don't think we need to cancel Will Smith. I hate cancel culture. I think canceling somebody, I don't even like using that word, exiling somebody should only be reserved for the worst of the worst of the worst, like the Harvey Weinsteins or even the Kevin Spaceys or, you know, people like that who clearly have just gone so far that are just aw such awful people that you can no longer separate the dancer from the dance. And so, you know, obviously you, you, there's a, there's going to be a part of Will Smith, that sort of narcissism that's going to want to fight. So don't give it to him, you know, back to the book, the sociopath next door, it even teaches you how, the way you deal with these narcissistic types, these predator types is what you do is you have to sort of play this dance of how to like, give them attention while not giving them attention because they're pretty good at, you know, there's a reason why these people are famous and powerful. You know, it, you know, they're using this mask of sanity, which allows them to survive because you actually have to feel sorry for these people. Uh, you know, um, you know, their entire life, they're hit by this, 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 this personality disorder stuff that just makes it hard for them to survive. So the, the, the mask of charisma they create to do it actually turns them into terrific actors and wow, they can make money off it. So, you know, God forbid they take this time to self-reflect and learn that that's what makes them them. But in any case, you know, by I don't think this should turn into a fight to take the Oscar from him. I think open the door because he really if he really is sorry, he'll surrender it. And can you imagine that? You know, can you imagine if he actually did it? Then he actually may earn my respect back as the audience. He may earn our respect back as the audience, you know, because it, right now, watch what's happening. If you want to go over the events of what happened, you have Will Smith first doing what he did, but then he cries on stage a few moments later as he's receiving his award. And it's like, let's just go into translation mode. He gets up and, you know, he starts to gaslight us. Typical move of an abuser. He says something like, like, well, you know, uh, I played King Richard. God, what an asshole. I played King, King Richard. I'm paraphrasing here. But King Richard, you know, he he loved his family. So I'm just being protective of mine. And then, you know, love makes people do crazy things. Like, yeah, it was the saint in him that made him do it. And if you look at King Richard, you know, the character he plays in, uh, in the movie King Richard. This man loved his daughters. You know, obviously a little bit neurotic in this plan he has to make sure that, you know, his, his kids are going to have a place in the world. But that man truly loves his kids, okay? Will Smith is a person that neglects his children, if you look at his history. And a great example is the Karate Kid debacle. So, I mean, in this episode, I was going to go into some of the things I didn't touch upon in the last episode. Um, I was actually with a film critic um, on his line of thought about the sort of cancel culture hate that came out when Will Smith casted his son... Um, in the Karate Kid remake, thinking, okay, I mean, really, at the end of the day, if it's a good movie, um, 
who cares? You know, and Will Smith's son, Jaden, actually is a very talented person. But there is more there is more going on in that that the audience caught on. And what they saw is the audience realized that there's just something off or toxic or weird about the whole thing. And I don't think I think that's where Owen Gleiberman, who writes for Variety, was wrong. What Owen Gleiberman didn't realize is that um uh for one, the movie's not very good. Okay, it's not bad, but it's not very good. So that it, they should have probably waited a year or two when he's a little more grown, more grown up before he played it. But the, you know, it, it's typical for these narcissistic types. They have a kid, not to be rude, but they're fuck trophies, and so you know now they want to show off to the world their kid. Oh, I know. Let's cast him in a movie. When if you just want to be a good dad, you don't need to spend a hundred million dollars on a movie to show off your child. How about this? How about? you just be a good dad to your kid because if you listen to Jaden in interviews he says these sad things where he says yeah my dad will just send me a credit card and I'll go off for a day buying whatever the hell I want like that's what a kid needs to be raised by your money and the truth is Will Smith is not present for his life so he's clearly not present for his family you know ever since you know from the moment he met his wife and the mother of Jaden he was sleeping around on her and so you know they could come up with whatever gaslighting that they need to sort of cover it up because you know then it comes out and now they're embarrassed and you have to feel so bad you have to feel bad for will smith's wife you know she has to confess to cheating on him at some point you know because she's kind of like in that princess diana mode where her affairs are like going to be judged harder against her than the asshole who's doing it so it's funny that the fresh prince of bel-air is like prince charles you know and there he goes, you know, living his life, is starting to hurt and embarrass his wife. So then she has to go into survival mode like Princess Diana and have affairs herself. And now they're going to judge her more harshly than Will Smith. So then they come up with this cockamamie crap about um, having open open relationship and da da this. All because she has, that's how she's surviving. And she's just digging herself into a deeper hole when the truth is she should kick his ass to the curb. But, you know, she becomes the enabler in all this. And you know, she has to pay the price in some sense for enabling this nonsense because, you know, she didn't have to like, you know, right after the, the slap happened with Chris Rock, she's now realizing, oh, well, my husband screwed up. So he'd better go to this um, after hours um, Oscar party. And, you know, they're dancing up a storm to like Will Smith music, playing it off like nothing happened. And I'm like, that's offensive. You know, you just ruined the Academy Awards with your drama. You've let this family drama already spill out into the media for long enough where if, if the audience was going to give you a pass and watch your movie, which we did, and then be cool with um, giving you the Academy Award, which we did, then, you know, you need to atone for this. At that point, they should have just gone home for the night or gone into some sort of emergency you know, therapist session. I mean, you know, in the pandemic, you can find a therapist within 10 minutes if you need, because everything's been streamlined in terms of Zoom calls and that sort of thing. And so, but they didn't. And then, then the very next day, then out, and then out trots out the, the stupid apology. I mean, Will Smith even gets his mother in on the act. You think that's a coincidence that Will Smith's mother decided to like chime into the media? Because, you know, like she just has a megaphone right next to her. Suddenly Will Smith's, you know, mother is being asked or just chimes in because obviously she's been enabling this asshole for so long. She goes on the media and says something like, oh, this is the first time in the history of Will Smith that I've ever seen him act this way. And of course, what the translation is on that is if mom steps in and makes it sound like Will Smith was the nicest guy up, up until the other day, then he, he must not be nuts. It's just so sick and cringy, all of this stuff. So we're now at a point now where it, Will Smith has made it very clear. And like I said earlier, you know, they asked him to leave. He refused. So you know what? This is now, he's now drawing the line in the sand. And that's why the Academy needs to kick his butt out and ask for him to return his Oscar, but not demand it. Because like I said, it's not going to matter anyways. You already gave it to him. But at the end of the day, telling him that we think he should return the Oscar. Um, and maybe that's what they could do. Maybe they could come halfway and say, you return the Oscar, we'll consider letting you return the Academy Awards in the future as a member, as a participant. But until you do, you're not welcome back, but you can keep the award. You know what I mean? Then let him hang himself as far as this is concerned by, you know, by the rope of his own mistakes, you know? And so other than that, um, you know, getting back to the Karate Kid thing um, as an example of this, because um, I didn't want to lose, you know, sorry for that tangent. Um, you have Will Smith, who's basically... Say, hey, there's my boy. You know, he's, he's framing it as a gift towards his son. But even that's not true. He's just trying, again, it's just like, it's like when you go out and you want to film a home video with your kid. You know, I do it all the time. And then, yeah, you want to show your family. Maybe even show it on YouTube for your, um, 
you know, your brother or something like that. But you know, it's not like, okay, no one wants to watch, you know, as an audience, <laughs> your kids' home videos. It's kind of like, you're, you know, when you were in high school and you made that little independent film, yeah, your family's going to be supportive or not. But unless you're literally like the next Steven Spielberg or, or Martin Scorsese, I mean, it, it's not for general consumption. It's kind of cringy. It's kind of like, and it's ironic because then he does it again. He doubles down on it, makes a movie called After Earth, where it's now so completely obvious that it's like, okay, your codependency issues are coming out here, man. And he picks none other than M. Night Shyamalan, who himself is guilty of this shit. You know, this is a guy who once read a bedtime story to his kids, looks up to that narcissistic, malignant part of his brain and says, hmm, you know, if it's good enough for my kid, then it must be good enough for the audience. It creates the atrocious, horrible, stuck-in-the-head movie Lady, Lady, um, Lady in the Water, I think. And I don't care that I don't remember the title of that, because that movie was so forgettable. But I did watch it. And he casts himself as a character who's writings are going to influence the next Jesus Christ who's going to save the world. So yeah, this is definitely coming from a place of sociopathy and narcissism. So here he is down in his luck because that movie fails. And so what does Will Smith do? Hires a guy who he has something in common with to direct the movie After Earth, which is about, it's like this Obi-Wan Luke Skywalker story about returning to an earth that's no longer ha habitable and, you know, uh, Will Smith plays sort of the hologram who's going to direct, um, uh, the, the, Jaden's character through a quest on Earth to fight off this monster or that. And, you know, again, Owen Gleiberman wrote a review for that, too. You know, I use him as my source because he's the closest thing you're going to have to an honest critic. Or I feel like what he's doing, he even wrote a really good book, by the way. I, well, I wouldn't call it really good. His book, Movie Freak, I think at least establishes why he does what he does. And so, again, I like Owen Gleiberman because um, other than Pauline Kael, um, there's not really a, a, a journalist or a person doing out there what I'm trying to do. But yeah, he has something I don't. He has access to a mainstream audience. He has access to, uh, he has your ear. So oftentimes he puts the smack down as it were, as best he can um, as a critic or movie journalist. But I've also kind of considered him a little bit like the Michael Scott of of movie critics and journalists because sometimes he does get tugged into this bizarre like anti-social um, direction that he calls contrarian, but I think it's antisocial. And I think an example of that was getting annoyed or irritated at the audience, at us, at me, for getting kind of grossed out by this codependency thing where Will Smith wants to sort of let his family drama now spill out into films by spoiling his son in movies like The Karate Kid or, or After Earth. But by the time we, After Earth failed, as it should have, it was a terrible movie. And again, I don't want to watch your kids little high school project that, yeah, you must have spent a hundred, you know, million dollars on for the simple reason that one, it's just a terrible movie, but gee, could it have something to do with the fact that the karma of making a terrible movie is that it kind of mangled your production like it did in The Karate Kid. I mean, let's just look at what's wrong with that movie for several different reasons. Jaden's good, but he's, he needed at least another year of acting. He just can't, you know, it's clear that he's just getting up there and just trying to write on his charisma alone. And even Will Smith, you know, the guy was a singer, you know, he, I have to admire, he does have his acting chops. He did you know, pay attention to learn. So it's, it, his charisma is not enough to carry a movie. And then you get the weird thing about casting Jackie Chan. No offense, Jackie Chan is great. He's like the Buster Keaton of martial arts. And when he's doing his little martial arts thing where he finds a pair of clogs and he's fighting a bunch of bad guys, probably mostly his friends, stunt double friends, but they're like on a construction site. He's swinging around the ladder and then he finds like a jump rope and uses that as a weapon. I mean, that's the shit that, that's like inspirational on the level of like Charlie Chaplin. But do we really watch Jackie Chan act? I mean, he's, no, he's a terrible actor. He was terrible in that movie. Um, and there's very little martial arts. I mean, he's not Pat Morita. You know what I mean? Like, that guy was actually... Did you know that Mr. Miyagi, the guy who played him, was nominated for an Academy Award? As he should. You know, the wax on, wax on stuff is, like, as iconic as can be. And he takes all these racist stereotypes of Japanese people, repurposes it, makes it into something sort of charming and indelible. Kind of like the way Johnny Depp was trying to do with his character Tonto in... Um, the Lone Ranger movie, but he pulls it off. So he gives us this iconic character worthy of Yoda. Not to be rude, but Jackie Chan playing, I think, a character named Han or something like that just isn't that good. And then even the, I mean, just, I mean, you could tell they're so distracted by their ego, you can't even really call it the Karate Kid because it's little things matter when the bigger picture's missed. I mean, karate is a uh, discipline of, of the Japanese, not the Chinese. So shouldn't the movie be called The Kung Fu Kid? But of course, 
No one's going to see that movie. And at that point, you're drawing too much attention to the awkwardness. You know what? E there could have been, there was an easy solution to this. Just to have fun jumping in. Like, if I was there with Will Smith, I would have said, hey, look, why not make Jackie Chan's character, who, you know, who's Chinese? Maybe he grew up as, like, the adopted kid in Japan, learned karate as his sport, but then when he had to move back to China, you know what I mean, is now the outcast for a couple of different reasons. Because, you know, Japanese and Chinese have been historically enemies at times throughout our history. That would have given him a great end because, you know, you have Jaden, who's a black kid in China because his mother had to move out there for a job. They could have bonded over that. And, you know, th that thoughtful storytelling came to me within a second or two. There you go. Now you've justified the Karate Kid title. But the fact of the matter is they're not focused on telling a good story. That's all about... Um, like I said, the codependency, you know, the, 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 the grooming of the audience, maybe his own child, through this ridiculous act of TMI. So, you know, it's stuff like that, you know, that, the interviews with Will Smith over the last couple of years, what happened on the stage that's making you realize that whatever's going on here, this codependent family is now, um, its drama is now spilled out. And back to Gliberman, um, you know, read his article about Mel Gibson. When Mel Gibson screwed up really bad, he was canceled, and in a sense, he still is. But Owen Gleiman wrote a really good article about why, in that case, it was probably deserved, because he wrote this article on, when he used to work for Entertainment Weekly before he was fired for that. Um, he wrote an article about how um, you sometimes can't separate the dance from the dance, because what are you going to do? If you play a creep in a movie, people are going to think you're exploiting, you know, a la O.J. Simpson. Like, do you know that asshole will go to, like, horror film conventions, and even though he still claims he's innocent, he'll sign, like, Freddy Krueger gloves or, or Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th masks. It's like he's trying to cash in on his notoriety of being a scumbag while also still claiming in a compartmentalized sense that he didn't do it. So if Mel Gibson plays, like, a bad guy or Mad Max right after what he did... Um, then suddenly it's like, you know, he's cashing out on it. If he tries to play a good guy, now he's whitewashing it. Because that's how I'm looking at King Richard now, that this is just, you know, gaslighting nonsense, pretending to be a character because, you know, he's trying to, you know, yes, of course Will Smith wants us to love us, pretending to be the good guy, but he's not actually a good guy enough that you can't look at his now off-screen antics and not be distracted by him. So you really can't separate the dance from the dance because all you're going to be thinking about is, you know, this is the guy who slapped and hurt another human being um, on stage in front of everybody to see. And so I mentioned Mel Gibson because, um, you know, I'm going to say something here that might turn a lot of you guys off, and that's fine. I think Mel Gibson's situation was different. Obviously, what he did was terrible. You know, he, he physically assaulted um, somebody, uh, you know, he was close to, there was a child involved um, at the time, even though he didn't strike the child um, still. Um, and so, but the thing, here's the thing though, Mel Gibson didn't do that in public on stage. He's actually a very professional person. He gets his, he gets the job done. He treats his coworkers, right? You know, he'll even put on, he'll put on like a clown nose or something to cheer people up while they're depressing something, um, you know, sad or whatnot, you know, it's getting people down. He's actually, you know, as far as business goes, he's a hard worker. He's actually a really good guy, professionally speaking. Now I don't know him personally. But, you know, we all have our issues, and that's the whole point. He keeps it. The fact is that I don't know him personally means he's doing something right. And, boy, we canceled the fuck out of him. And, yeah, probably he did deserve some type of timeout. But, you know, since then, he's just even he just put his head down and worked. He gave us Hacksaw Ridge, which is, I think, his way of apologizing. We can let that guy out of the doghouse. That's the thing that pisses me off about Hollywood. Hollywood and our culture has scapegoats. And, you know, fuck that shit. You know, and at the end of the day, he didn't get up and strike his girlfriend or wife of the time, whatever she was, on the stage in front of all of us. You see, and that's the difference here. You know what I mean? Whatever people do in their personal life really is like their own personal business. And yes, if it becomes so bad that suddenly, you know, like Charlie Sheen, suddenly, you know, it starts to interfere with the job in some sense, some sense or another, they are going to suffer natural consequences. But if they put their head down and go back to work, deal with it on their own, I mean, is this not America? Is this not the place of second chances? Is this not the place of due process? You know what I mean? And yeah, there are some people whose behavior is so bad that they get away with it, like Trump, that we don't need to wait till they get convicted in a court of law in order for us to say, okay, we don't have anything to do with them. But again, those are the exceptions to the rule. Normally, people should have a presumption of innocence. You know, Hollywood, America, if anyone watches this more than maybe the two or three people that are my friend, <laughs> if I really get an audience for this and the audience connects um, with this, which I think they will. It's time to let Mel Gibson out of the doghouse. 
And I'm sorry, we got to put Will Smith into the doghouse. And the reason why we need to do that is because it's enough. It's too much. I, 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 I in a funny way, I'm going to say this, uh, hopefully in a way that you'll understand. Um, I lo I'm actually so happy about this theater that happened. I'm not happy for the slap that happened to poor Chris Rock. I mean, that's a shitty thing. Okay. But I'm happy that this happened because we're talking about movies again. You know, in other words, in other words, if good can come out of bad, then of course we're just taking a bad situation and making good out of it. If this is what saves Hollywood, because if they don't act on this the right way, this may be their, their moment where they've jumped the shark in a sense, and they've already kind of jumped it so many other times, but this really may be, I think, the end. You know, so I hope, I pray that my little guerrilla campaign to hold Will Smith is responsible to hold to hold Will Smith responsible happened uh, because if we don't, then you know what, what what's the point of this tradition anyways? And just let Netflix win. Nothing against Netflix. I love what they do, and they're not doing anything wrong. I, I do think sometimes you rail too hard on the whole streaming culture thing. They're just reflecting what's fra you know fragmented in our own in uh, in our own audience experience. But the audience is still there. You know, Spider Man. Uh, no, there. Um, what is it? Uh, no Way Home, I think the title was. Isn't that terrible? I don't know these titles off the top of my head. Um, you know, but that movie, the audiences, despite COVID, despite streaming, they went out and they fucking saw that movie. And I'm nothing against it. I, I, back to my friend Owen Gleiberman, he hated the movie. But you know what? I got to give him credit. He said, and yet that movie still deserved to be nominated for Best Picture, maybe even win. And why not? The audience showed up for that. I think it showed up because the movie is not pretending to be anything other than broken like the rest of our society. And, you know, after all the Spider-Man franchises, you know, the, 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 the very corporate Tobey Maguire, you know, the Mark Webb movies with Andrew Garfield, and now, you know, the, the sort of Harry po Potter spin on it with the new Spider-Man. The fact that they're just like, just saying, you know what, fuck it, let's just rock it. Let's just cast all the Spider-Man, all the villains, and just be what we are is the right step forward. And that's why audience is connected with it, because the movie's every bit as broken as we are, but the movie's not pretending that it's not. And yeah, they could have done something then artfully with it, taking it to the next level. I still think the one before it, uh, Far From Home, was great because, you know, I said the word gaslighting maybe like eight or nine times here. You know, if it's a, if it's a drinking game, you're probably drunk by now for every time I said it. But that movie, Mysterio, played excellently by Jake Gwenenthal, was basically that the real enemy of that is just domestic abuse between a stepfather figure and, you know, um, his surrogate stepson. And so it, it, gaslighting is the villain in that. So that was pretty good. It's good that when these movies can actually be a thoughtful and connect with the audience but still in other words these movies are not devoid of art you know they're they're kind of one big ongoing story that sort of culminated in the most recent uh spider-man movie okay but you know there, there's hope there you know there, 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 there's not the audience came together for that which means you guys are still out there you know what i mean so that's why there's a chance here there's a chance that we could use this as an opportunity and you know i, I i'm a big forgive and forget guy i think people screw up Thank God Chris Rock survived the slap, even though he's going to probably have PTSD and have to deal with that. So if Will Smith really wants to apologize, surrendering your Oscar will, if you're watching this, that's the what you need to do. That's what you need to do here, okay? You surrender that Oscar. And yeah, you may never get nominated again, but you'll, you'll, you'll earn a way back in your heart. There's nothing here that can't be forgiven. It's, you'll be a bigger man for it. You'll be a real winner. That to sound cliche. Um, but you'll, you'll be a real winner if you can just say, yeah, my shit came out, so let's really use this as an opportunity for healing, not in the token sense. So those are the lines that are drawn. Um, and uh, at some point, I'm going to be working on... Sorry, I got distracted because remember, I'm driving here. At some point, um, uh, I'm going to do episode three. Uh, for people that are still tuned in, uh, as you can tell, this is a bit of sort of a talking head hater piece. But, you know, I, I hope that the, the charm of all this is yeah I, i'm just sharing with you as a member of the audience how i feel and react to these things and so we'll pick maybe a different theme uh, some of the episodes might concentrate on a movie that i really like so it's not just going to be all about bitching about this person or that um but in the meanwhile thank you for joining please per, uh, please subscribe and have a wonderful day this is blake hamilton signing off anyway we delivered the bomb